Welcome back. This is the continuation of session 2.8a. Now, let me tell you this hash symbol is to indicate that what is given here is a comment. So I can say 2.2b, this is a comment. Now, let us declare a few more variables to explain the dynamic typing nature of Python. We have already declared two variables, which are X and Y. We assigned a value of 10 to them. Since 10 being as an integer object, X and Y are now integers. So let me explain here. We have X variable with a value 10 and another variable Y with a value 10. That means what the Python has created an object, which is an integer object. And it has initialized it with value 10. And then it made the X to point to this object as well as Y also to point to the same object. Now X and Y are labels bound to the integer object, which is initialized with 10. Dynamic typing means I can now use the same variable name in the program to make it point to some other value, some other object. Now, shall I, I will write it as 2.0. Now, what does the comp Python interpret it as? It creates a floating point object with an initial value of 2.0. And now it makes this variable to point to this object. The variable which was an integer here, it becomes a floating point now. The type of the variable is changing. This is what we mean as dynamic typing of Python. Before I change the value of x, let us print the type of variable x. And type of variable y. Now we see that it's a integer class. It's an object of type integer class. Don't worry about this class and objects. Uh, we will learn more about that. It's a type integer type since we are building a objects of this this is called an integer class okay so both x and y are now in integer objects and they belong to the class int to explain the dynamic nature of python let us assign now x equal to 2.0 now if i print x I will get this value, of course, 2.0. Now, let me also see whether the type has changed or not. Type of X. Now you see that after the two is printed, the type of X has become float now. It was earlier an integer, now it has become float. That's what I mentioned. When I assign a floating point value, this is now pointing to an object of type float. So the type of X is now float. Similarly, I can also declare a string. I will cover the string in detail later on. Now I am assigning a string and then print my str. Now, let us see the output. Now, we get Geetam. What does it mean? 
this string geetam is stored in the memory. Let me explain here. It creates a string object, Python, which is initialized with geetam and then the variable mystr is pointing at the string object's address. So when I say print, the print function is called with the input mystr. Now what is getting passed to the print function? The address of Gita, this string object. Now print function internally accesses that, gets the address, uses the address to access the object and then it prints the value stored inside the object, which is nothing but Gita. So, Githam gets printed when this print function is passed with the address of the string object, not the actual object itself is passed. It's only the address of the object which is passed. So in Python, what is exchanged between functions are only the addresses or the references to objects. The other name for that is IDs. So both all of them mean the same. Suppose you have an object, an integer object, x, having a value 10, then what is stored inside x, a label, x, is address of the integer object, or I can call it as a reference to the, reference to the integer object, or I can also say that it's a id uh, to the integer object. So it's, it's called either it is reference or I, it is an address or I can call it as ID. So all of them mean that where this integer object is in the memory, which is getting into the variable X. So it's a binding of a label with the object. And if I call a function print and then pass X to it, that means I am passing the address of the integer object and print function accesses it and prints the value which is stored in the object. So I hope this example, whatever I have shown you, gives you a clear idea of how Python handles various objects and what is getting passed across functions is nothing but the addresses of objects. So all the parameters to a function are all references to objects. I hope this is clear. We'll meet you in the next section. Bye-bye.